okay, it's the day before the draft and three big rumors come out surrounding the Philadelphia Eagles. One of the rumors is from a guy who's been right multiple times in the past. Plus, with Isaiah Rogers being reinstated, we take a look at his numbers in 2022. They're better than I thought. We also talk about what the Broncos just did with Patrick Sertain, another possible trade for a cornerback that nobody's talking about except one person. And what is going on in Dallas? You just gotta laugh. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today we got a lot to get into. But before we do that, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a quick favor? Help your boy out. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. And turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. Breaking news out of the NFL that don't really affect the Eagles, but it shows how smart Howie Roseman is. Ian Rappaport tweets, the Lions have a deal for one of the top young talents. Agreed on an extension for a wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown. He gets four years and more than $120 million with 77 guaranteed. One week after the Devontae Smith contract, now another receiver gets signed for $30 million a year. Mind you, C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, all of them are still out there. The wide receiver market's crazy, and Howie Roseman always makes his move first. Plus, shout out to Devontae Smith for wanting to be an Eagle. As we all know, it is 100% official. The Eagles even tweeted, the NFL has reinstated cornerback Isaiah Rodgers, who can now participate in all team activities. Man, it's just good to hear, especially with this scare that he wasn't going to be reinstated because he bet on his own team. That being said, Elliot Shore Parks tweeted after it, Isaiah Rogers' numbers in 2022 per football focus. He was the fifth best overall cornerback in 2022 and the sixth best cornerback in coverage. This is all corners who at least play 20%. Now, he only started 11 games, which is a small but a decent sample size, to be honest. Let's not forget with the new kickoff rules and how they're going to try to force you to return it, he can come in clutch there as he competes for cornerback two against James Bradbury, Keely Ringo, and a possible draftee. Did you really think that draft week for the Eagles was going to be quiet? Between yesterday and today, three big rumors by credible people saying the Eagles are going to do different things. Let's start with today's. Sean Talk Eagles tweeted what was said by Dan Graciano in the ESPN article people he talked to believe the Eagles want to try to move for a wide receiver, though one theory I found very interesting and potentially hilarious is that they could move up for tight end Brock Bowers given the recent prediction for Georgia players. Again, he said potentially hilarious to move up for Brock Bowers, probably inside the top 10. Although he's a dog, he'd be tight end too until Dallas Goddard moves on. However, I don't see the Eagles giving up draft capital to move up for a wide receiver three. Even if he's talented, let's not act like Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown ain't 1A, 1B. Their pay and their play says it. So, yes, you could draft a wide receiver, but to move up for one is ridiculous. The second rumor is tweeted by Philadelphia Eagles Central. Draft rumors, the position that Albert Breer has heard the most consistently assigned to the Eagles in the first round is an offensive tackle. Getting Lane Johnson's replacement could be on the Eagles' radar. We did bring in the offensive tackle, Troy Fatanu. I know he's a left, but I think he could play right. The Eagles also had interest in Amarius Mims, Tyler Guyton, the Alabama tackle, JC forgot his last name. Let me know in the comment section. So although that rumor won't please people, it could happen. And the last rumor tweeted by Sideline Eagles NFL Draft per at Tony Pauly, the Eagles are talking with the Broncos about trading up to pick number 12 and selecting Toledo's cornerback Quinion Mitchell, which is interesting to me. A lot of people do have Quinion Mitchell as cornerback one and Terion Arnold as cornerback two. We've heard that the Eagles had a spectacular visit with Terry on Arnold, blah, blah, blah. So it is interesting that Tony Pauly said that the interest is leaning towards Quinion Mitchell. Remember, Tony Pauly was calling Cam Jurgens to the Eagles, the only one prior to the draft in 2022. He was also the first one saying C.J. Garner-Johnson is going to come back to the Eagles that was early in the offseason when people were laughing at him like, no way does he come back. He was right about that. 
Not saying he's right about Quinion Mitchell and the Eagles, but he is in the know. That being said, a lot of people talk about who Quinion Mitchell played at Toledo compared to who Terion Arnold played at Alabama. And I agree, you can utilize that for a reference. However, Cincinnati is a smaller school than LSU. And when Derek Stingley Jr. and Sauce Garner were coming out the draft, they wondered who was better. Clearly, Sauce Garner is the better corner. Now, Cincinnati is a bigger school than Toledo, but same kind of example. However, at the end of the day, they're both great guys. I would take either. Again, if the Eagles really want corner, could this be the smokescreen so people move up to get Quinion Mitchell when the Eagles really wanted Terion Arnold? I'm not sure. We did hear how spectacular Terion Arnold's visit was with the Eagles, and we heard from Daniel Jeremiah how much work the Eagles have done via the cornerbacks in this draft. Plus, this is his official prediction. 70% up, 30% back uh, would be my guess there. So I would say more likely to trade up than to trade back but 0% chance he sticks and picks. If I was going to lean in one direction, I'm leaning towards corner. You know, I, if, if you know, where we are right now as we march towards the draft, if I was going to put in my, my guess on the Eagles, I would say it is one of the Alabama corners, whether or not that's, you know, where they are or whether they have to move up a little bit. Man, Thursday, April 25th at 8 o'clock. Can't come sooner. Remember, I'll be live with Gate City Philly Fresh and Lord Brunson. Adam Schefter was on 97.5 The Fanatic earlier today, and he said, let's use 16 as an example. Seattle doesn't have a second-round pick, and Seattle would love to recoup a second-round draft pick, so it makes all the sense in the world for Seattle to move back to 22 and the Eagles to move up to 16. Now, before we get to if we went up to 16, who would that be for? Plus some big news on Patrick Sertain. Keep your eyes open. We also go over another possible trade per Anthony DeBona. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Go check out BetUS by clicking the link in the description and or the pinned comment section. They will give you a 125% bonus on your first three deposits all the way up to 2,500. Let's take a look at some draft bets. The Philadelphia Eagles position for their first round pick. Quarterback and running back is plus 20,000 because it's not happening. Wide receiver is plus 2,000. Mm. Tight end plus 5,000. Mm. Offensive lineman plus 125. They're saying there's a possibility. Defensive line slash edge plus 200. Possibility. Linebacker 4,000 not happening with the first round pick. Safety 4,000 not happening. Kicker, punter, long snapper, plus 20,000, not happening. But cornerback is plus 115. It's the lowest. That's what BetUS thinks the Eagles are going to do. If you agree, click it. If you think it's going to be offensive lineman at 125 or defense at plus 200, make your picks. So continuing what Adam Schefter said about moving up to 16. What if Terry on Arnold and Quinion Mitchell's not there? It could be for a pass rusher. There's no big rumors about it. But we know how the Eagles work. Chop Robinson, Jarrett Verse. But the guy the Eagles showed a lot of interest in is Lie Tulatu, UCLA pass rusher. I know some people don't like his age or his injury history, but he stayed healthy last year. And look at the film. He balled out, has a ton of tricks up his sleeve. His trainer and coach said that he's guaranteeing that Law 2 comes in as a rookie and gets double-digit sacks. He said he worked with seven first-round defensive linemen, but he sees the most out of Law 2. Moving on to the Patrick Sertain news, Adam Schefter tweeted yesterday, the Broncos picked up his fifth-year option on Pro Bowl cornerback Patrick Sertain per sources. If you got a guy that you believe in and want to be a cornerstone of your team, you don't pick up his fifth-year option. You do what we did with Devontae Smith. To me, that could be the Broncos saying, listen, if somebody's willing to help me move up and get a quarterback, give me this, give me that, that I could package for a quarterback, we're interested in trading Patrick Sertain. They got $85 million in dead money. They're really ready to hit the reset button on a lot of things. And so why have the best or second best corner on your team? Not saying how he's going to jump to it, but if there are trades on the table, Howie's definitely calling. As for a trade nobody's talking about, except for Pro Football Network's Anthony DeBona, 
If the Eagles don't select a cornerback early in the 2024 NFL Draft, one potential trade candidate that I have my eyes on is Marshawn Lattimore, who's only 28 years old. Anthony DeBona continued to talk about the relationship between Howie Roseman and the Saints GM. He also talked about C.J. Garner-Johnson being prior teammates with him and the fact that the Saints did look to trade Marshawn Lattimore at the end of last year's offseason. He also said Philadelphia traded a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick for Slay back in 2020. Would the Eagles be willing to part with multiple draft picks for Lattimore? I still think he got a lot left in the gas tank at only 28 years old. He did battle through some stuff the last two years. However, a third and a fifth is not that much. Although, this draft is set up for the Eagles to get their corner if they want their corner for sure. It has been 22 years since the Eagles went corner in the first round. And that's the Eagles. Howie Roseman never drafted a corner in the first round. So it should be interesting. Real quick, I do want to show you this clip. Since Jason Kelsey helped pick Cam Jurgens. Other Eagle players are putting in their input as it pertains to who the Eagles should draft. You mentioned Jason Kelsey looked at some guys, liked Cam Jurgens. Do you have players on this team right now that are coming to you with tapes of guys or telling you I like this guy? Yeah, I, th I think it's, just, uh, it's, it's like I opened this door and now all of a sudden, you know, everyone wants to scout. And, but you know what? I love that our players are interested in the evaluation process. Hey, game recognizes game. It worked for Jason Kelsey and Cam Jurgens. Not saying Howie and Nick and the scouts got to listen, but I love that the Eagles team are all involved slash hype for the NFL draft and making this team better. Last but not least, you got to hear what's going on in Dallas. Jerry Jones don't even know what he's talking about. Listen. There's a very reason why we're 24th out of 32 teams draft that we get to pick a player this time because we were the 24th best in the NFL, according to the rules. And so we get to pick, uh, everybody gets to pick before us up to 24. He said they were the 24th best team, that's why they're picking there. No, you go backwards. So they would be the ninth best team, not the 24th. I love it. Jerry Jones, please stay healthy and stay in control of the Dallas Cowboys because it's a hot mess over there. With all that being said, I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. Drop the muscle emoji. Leave all your thoughts in the comment section as it pertains to everything that's going on. Give me your input, and also hit the like button for your boy. It's easy, it's free, don't cost a thing. Subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. We out.